questions. Um, we've got two talks for you. Uh, the first one is a free start collision for full SHA-1. It's a joint work with Mark Stevens, uh, Pierre Carman, and Thomas Perret. And Mark Stevens will uh, give the talk. Okay, thank you, Bart. Uh, first, some background. Of course, uh, as we all know, SHA-1 is a cryptographic hash function standardized by NIST in 1995. Uh, and basically maps uh, arbitrary length bit strings to a bit string of uh, 160 bits. That's basically random looking. Although we cannot formally define collision resistance uh, for these dedicated hash functions, uh, an informal definition of collision resistance of SHA-1 is that it's practically infeasible to find different messages, X and Y, that have the same output hash function. Now, of course, it's a generic uh, birthday search attack that basically allows you to find such collisions in about 2 to the power 80 SHA-1 calls. And we can already see that basically 80-bit security uh, is not enough uh, nowadays if you look at Bitcoin and that, and we can basically see that with the current Bitcoin computing power, it would take about two months uh, uh, that much computing. Um, so while you use digital signature standards like SHA-1 RSA, SHA-2 RSA, and before MD5 RSA, RSA are all uh, built upon the hash then sign principle where if you want to sign a message, you first hash it, then this hash is actually uh, then uh, signed with a public key cryptography, uh, RSA with a private key, and to verify, basically anybody can do that by comparison uh, a recomputed hash from the message and by recovering uh, the uh, sort of a, a encrypted hash uh, uh, from the signature using the public key. Now because these signature uh, standards use the hash directly, uh, the security of these standards uh, depend on the collision resistance of the hash function. Because if an attacker can already build a collision for SHA-1 and basically gets one message uh, signed by someone, then the signature for that message is also a valid signature for the other hash function. Because basically, uh, the, the hash you compute from the message side is the same as you can uh, reconstruct from the, the signature. And of course, this would not be possible if uh, the signer actually would use randomness. Uh, so instead of a hash function, would, for instance, use a MAC with a, a, a randomly uh, generated uh, uh, key that's uh, supplied together with the digital signature. Well, it's well known that SHA-1 is not collision resistance. Already in, uh, more than 10 years ago, in 2005, uh, Wang et al. Uh, presented a collision attack with complexity 2 to the power 69, and this has only been uh, later improved to about uh, 2 to the power 61 uh, in 2013. Um, well, that's still uh, not really practical, so there are no collisions have been found yet, and Schneier uh, basically has a blog post about the projected costs of SHA-1 collisions, basically uh, showing the declining uh, costs uh, to co compute such a SHA-1 collision over the years due to Moore's law. And uh, so he predicted in 2012 it would cost about uh, almost 3 million, but it would uh, drop by uh, about today uh, uh, to 700,000, and by 2021 would drop to uh, 33,000 uh, by just renting uh, computing power on uh, Amazon EC2. Now, SHA-1 uh, accepts uh, arbitrary length bit strings and basically processes them uh, using uh, merkle Domkart construction. So it splits uh, the entire message into five 12-bit blocks and processes them these uh, iteratively using a compression function that take only takes fixed size inputs. Now, of course, there is this uh, security reduction that uh, basically if you have a SHA-1 collision, you can basically determine a collision for the compression function. And this basically means that if the compression function is collision resistant, if it's infeasible, practically infeasible to find collisions for the compression function, then it's also practically infeasible to find collisions for SHA-1. Uh, and but it also implies that once we found a collision uh, for the compression function, then basically this whole uh, security reduction does not hold anymore. So SHA-1 free start collisions. Um, Example SHA-1 collisions have been thought to be in eminence ever since this uh, f the first uh, attack. Yet, if we look over the years, uh, what's been happening, um, uh, it really shows that the analysis is more complicated than we thought. And even so, even still, the 2 to the power 61 is, uh, remains at too high cost uh, uh, to really quickly uh, uh, compute this. So, in this work, we basically uh, 
want to follow this uh, research section where we act wanted to focus on free start collisions, meaning a collision attack on the compression function, not SHA-1 uh, itself. It's, it's a weaker attack on uh, SHA-1 than a collision attack. It's, uh, it's more practical, more easier. We also, uh, to make it uh, more practical, uh, we looked at using massively parallel architectures, specifically NVIDIA graphics cards, because they have a really a significantly higher uh, performance per cost ratio compared to regular CPUs. And naturally, to really uh, make sure we get uh, everything out of the crypt analysis, we use joint local collision analysis, uh, which is a very precise analysis over the uh, later steps of SHA-1 to ensure that we get uh, optimal complexity there and a uh, maximized amount of uh, degrees of freedom. So in a, in a previous work, uh, we already uh, created a, a free start attack on SHA-1, uh, reduced round, uh, only uh, 76 steps out of the uh, 80. And there we actually only applied as a message modification technique only neutral bits, which is a, a very simple form of message modification to speed up the technique. Uh, but still, the attack was very, uh, very quick. It only took about five days to, to uh, uh, generate such uh, free start collisions for 76 steps SHA-1. In this weird work, we've really uh, built uh, on top of this and we've uh, extended our GPU framework now we, uh, that we can also uh, uh, do boomerangs, a much more uh, advanced uh, type of uh, speed up technique, a message modification technique, uh, to cover the full 80 rounds. Uh, and it has been well known that basically uh, very at the, at the end, uh, covering more rounds of SHA-1, the uh, attack complexity really uh, quickly increases. Um, but nevertheless, with uh, the additional uh, tool boomerangs, uh, finding free start collisions for full SHA-1 only takes about 640 GPU days. And we actually built a cluster of uh, 64 GPUs, uh, 60 machines, just regular desktops uh, uh, with four graphics cards uh, inside, and it took uh, only about uh, 10 days to do this uh, computation. Now, this is the first practical attack on, uh, on full SHA-1. And uh, we have an example collision uh, on our website, uh, the Shepening, um, and also we will make there the, the source code available uh, for other people uh, to run on. But this is not a collision for, for full SHA-1 uh, yet. Uh, and so, but based on this work, um, we can still estimate what the, the we can present new uh, updated estimated costs uh, for finding a full SHA-1 collision. And basically using uh, GPUs, we estimate it would take about 40,000 uh, uh, GPU days. And if you rent this on EC2, this would cost about uh, 100,000, which is significantly lower than, than uh, Snyder's estimates uh, before. So as a uh, overview of uh, how our attack uh, works, so uh, if we look at the SHA-1 compression function, we have uh, the message, uh, 16 words, which is expanded to 80 words using a linear recurrence relation. And we have a chaining value, which is consists of five words, which is then uh, expanded up to 85 words using a nonlinear function that uh, each uses one single expanded message word. And then finally, there's the Davies-Meyer forward, where this input chaining value of five words is basically added uh, to the last five uh, words uh, computed in this fashion. Of course, the main tool for the collision attacks are uh, differential paths, where we consider uh, two uh, strongly related uh, computations of the compression function, and we look at the differences. And the differential path is basically a precise description of the propagation of those differences through the compression function. And here it's very important to note that the basically uh, the last 60 steps determine most of the attack's complexity. As we'll see, uh, basically the first few steps are easily dealt with, and it's really the last 60 steps that we really have to optimize. And that's there where we use uh, GCLA that was already developed in 2013 and improved in uh, 2015 to 16, um, where we basically consider the set of all differential paths uh, uh, adhering to this uh, uh, so-called disturbance vector. Um, uh, and then we can basically uh, determine uh, the maximum success probability and then also the uh, maximized amount of freedoms. Now, if we have this differential path, uh, we basically have to translate it into a system of equations to solve, which is very easy. And what we basically get is we get linear equations uh, on the uh, first 16 words of the message. So that's very uh, simple. And for the state bits, 
we may have very simple uh, equations. Now, the first 16 steps can easily be solved just uh, by just choosing the, the correct uh, uh, values. Uh, but this already determines the remaining 64 steps, which are definitely harder uh, to cope with. We have some speed up techniques, uh, neutral bits and boomerangs, and these basically make very predictable changes uh, in up to step 24, um, uh, where we can uh, generate uh, new pairs, uh, satisfying the conditions um, uh, very cheaply uh, that satisfy the conditions up to step 24, which basically means we only have real control uh, over SHA-1 up to about uh, step 24. And then the remaining steps, the remaining conditions uh, that are left, they basically have to be filled probabilistically. So we have to generate many solutions uh, over up to step 24 and basically check whether they're uh, uh, satisfied. Now in a free start collision attack, uh, we're not going to start completely from the beginning, we're going actually going to start from the, the, from the middle. And basically the advantage is, is that uh, uh, the hardest parts uh, actually becomes a little bit uh, cheaper. That's, that's our, our freedom. We have a lower attack complexity. And the disadvantage is, is that we now we don't have full control over the input anymore. So we can't build uh, a, a collision uh, for SHA-1. But we only get a collision for the compression function. And we basically have differences at the beginning and at the end, but we use the feed forward uh, to basically ensure that these, uh, these are su chosen such that the, they, they cancel out and we really get a collision. Now for the GPUs, we use the NVIDIA GTX 970. Uh, there's already a new generation uh, upcoming which uh, 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 promises uh, even a, a higher price performance ratio. And these are basically 1,600 cores running at uh, 1 1.2 uh, gigahertz um, with a very uh, high uh, good throughput, just one per, uh, per cycle per core, except for bitwise cyclic rotations, and it's very cheap, just 350 euros. Now, this is, of course, very different from a regular CPU uh, because the GPU has a single instruction, multiple threads uh, 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 model where execution is bundled in warps of 32 threads. And they basically have to execute the same instruction. And if they don't do that, then basically uh, everything is serialized. So every uh, this, uh, distinct instruction is executed in a separate uh, cycle. So it's really important to minimize uh, branching. Well, on the GPU, you can actually run more threads than you have actual cores because it has transparent scheduling of actionable warps uh, uh, to cores. So uh, this is another advantage of the CPU, uh, for the GPU, because you can basically hide the latency of computations and of memory access in this way. But you also have to be very careful about the memory reads. Uh, they have to be uh, very close to each other, and not uh, for the uh, every memory operation of the uh, of the thread within the warp have to be very close to each other, uh, basically in the same bank, and then everything is very fast. If they're too far away, then again every memory access is uh, serialized again. So uh, normally a collision search is a depth first tree search, so it's very highly branching. And to make this uh, work very efficient on a GPU, we've basically split the entire computation into steps, and we use shared buffers in between uh, steps that basically uh, stores partial solutions. And then uh, uh, to set a, a warp, uh, 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 to have a warp compute something, it basically looks at the very last queue where there's work, and then every thread of the warp loads one uh, solution, basically goes over all the remaining degrees of freedom for that particular step, uh, verifies the condition. If it doesn't satisfy the condition, it throws it away, and if it satisfies the condition, then basically together with the, the other threads in the warp, stores these solutions, partial solutions for the next step uh, in the next uh, uh, shared buffer. And um, basically, that first uh, search, uh, we always process in the last queue with enough work. And we've basically removed all the branching uh, just to the uh, decision of uh, uh, which uh, step to process. But the entire warp does the same thing. So there's no real branching uh, there. And basically, there's only a minor branch in whether, whether or not uh, to store something. And even with the storing, everything is loaded basically uh, very closely uh, uh, together. So we've really optimized uh, the, uh, 
the parallelism in instructions, but also in, in memory access. So um, we've, uh, we have a, a free start collision, an actual free start collision for full SHA-1, which is the, the first practical attack on SHA-1. And the Schneier predicted in 2012 that uh, in around 2015-16, yeah, it would cost about 700K uh, dollar um, based on Amazon EC2 rates, Moore's law, uh, and that work in 2012. And uh, with our analysis, we actually come up with uh, new predictions uh, for the cost of collisions for full SHA-1, uh, where you basically uh, uh, take the uh, best attack to the power of 61, uh, and we basically estimate this costs about 40,000 GPU days uh, on the older GPUs that Amazon EC2 uses. So if it actually on uh, on the GTX 970 that we used, it would actually take less uh, GPU days. And if we look at the Amazon EC2 spot prices, then you can basically, uh, uh, this would cost about uh, 100 uh, kilo dollar. And this is really a, a factor seven lower cost in 2015. Um, and it also really puts a lot more stress on, the, on how fast we have to uh, uh, deprecate uh, uh, SHA-1. Um, so uh, to conclude, I'm actually very fast. Uh, we have a first practical of attack on full SHA-1, and this really invalidates SHA-1 security reduction. But there is no uh, SHA-1 collision yet. And so this work, and also the previous free start collision work, has really served as to build up towards the, the, the real SHA-1 collision attack. So now we have uh, the GPU framework, um, uh, and all the, the tools uh, built uh, for that, that we can actually can now start undertaking this. And uh, the industry's deprecation of SHA-1 has been really, really slow. If we, uh, basically for all the uh, secure websites, there, there are still plenty of uh, SHA-1 certificates uh, out there, and they're basically still accepted uh, uh, until the end of this year, while NIST already said in, in 2011 that uh, SHA-1 sh should be deprecated for digital signatures at the end of 2013. So it's the industry's uh, deprecation is really slow, and that's why we really want to build a practical e example SHA-1 collision to really speed up this uh, uh, deprecation. But that's a uh, future work. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Very nice work. Can you just clarify something? So this estimate of $700,000 is for two to the 80 computations, I assume with low memory accesses? Sorry, the, the, the 700K from Schneier or yes, the yes. ours? No, for, no for, from Schneier, right? Yeah. I assume it's two to the 80 computations? To the power of 60, actually. Schneier's estimation in 2012 is based oh. on a uh, attack cost of 2 to the power of 60. Okay, I, w I was assuming it was brute force, sorry. For, for no, no. Okay, I, I wasn't sure about the relation between those numbers. Thank you very much. Other questions? So I guess you are looking for uh, an actual collision now. Yes. Are you making any progress or? Um, for for SHA-1 collision, uh, we basically are building an identical prefix collision and not a chosen prefix collision, like has been done for MD5, the Rogue CA, so identical prefix, which is not as powerful. I think we still have a very powerful uh, example uh, that we are building for it, but it will not be based on certificates. Um, so we've built uh, uh, the application uh, example and for identical prefix, you basically need to have uh, two near collision attacks, so basically two separate attacks on the compression function. Uh, and we finished the first one, and we're working on the second one. But uh, we still need to adapt our, uh, our framework a little bit more for the, uh, to cope with uh, the increase in... Uh, the first few steps are more overdefined. The system of creation over the first few steps is more overdefined, so they're, they're uh, harder to cope with, and we still have to adapt our framework for that. But uh, we're working on it. And Thanks. Any other question? Thanks, Ivan. Uh, 
So first of all, this is great work. Thank you for, for continuing to work <laughs> on this. Um, I, one question I have for you, based on what you've, you've seen, is do you feel like it's absolutely certain that you can get a collision? You know, just, is it just a matter of more work, or are there still likely to be places where you still have to untangle things, you know, fi find unresolved conflicts that you then have to find a new way around? Or you know, what do you think? Is it just a matter of throwing more brute force at it? Yeah, I mean, uh, given all the tools, and we really have a lot of uh, uh, degrees of freedom uh, left in the overall attack. So, um, and we really understand everything about uh, all the parts. So, uh, I don't see any big hurdles. D the more immediate hurdle here is that now the first few steps is over the find, so it's a little bit harder to find a solution uh, for the first few steps. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the complete attack cost, that's uh, the complexity you spent on the first few steps is completely negligible with all the speed up techniques. Then you, you really spend the time there. So maybe just one solution over the first few steps is sufficient to do the entire attack. So, uh, but we did not have to cope with that before. So now there's mostly a man hour issue in uh, that we have to uh, uh, adapt our, uh, the, the, the tools uh, uh, for that to, to get uh, that. But then basically uh, I see no, uh, no real issue, except of course actually running the attack on, on a really a lot of uh, GPUs, which of course is a, like a very big distribution uh, computing project. It uh, also takes some effort. So I think with the available computing power we have, it's now actually uh, the available man hours is more of a hurdle than the computing power. Right, thanks. Any other question? If there are no other questions, let's uh, thank Mark again. Thank you. Thank you.